Welcome to this video where I am going to show you how to make a infographic that can visually represent some data, perhaps that you might have collected from a Google form or some other survey tool. So the first step when we are looking at creating an infographic is we need to understand the story that we want to tell. There's no point jumping straight in, putting loads of graphics in, uh, looking at the color, the fonts, tempting as that might be, if we don't know what the message is that we're trying to get across. So if you've used Google Forms to create a survey, then you should now have some responses. And Google Forms does a pretty good job of showing them in a visual way, but there are definite improvements that we could make. Your first job is to read through the results that you have collected and summarize them, uh, pulling out the key points. And that doesn't just mean copy and pasting your charts. It might mean going through some of your open text responses and looking for themes and patterns that occur in your data. To help you do this, start a new document, maybe in Google Docs or Word, and use it to keep track of the key information that you find from your survey. And then start structuring it into sections that could form part of your infographic. So here I've got a summary of my survey and I've thought, here's my heading um, and I've looked at the data about who's responded uh, and what their experience with coding is. So that tells me a bit about who um, has responded to my survey. I've also then looked at what they want to do if we run a code club, for example. So here are some of the things that people want to do and the numbers. And also there's some specific information as well that they gave me about particular project ideas. So I've gone through and pulled out some of the most interesting ones from there. This now is the basis for my infographic. It's this information that I'm going to use to make a sort of poster that visualizes and summarizes all of this in a really visually engaging way. To make my infographic, I'm going to use an online tool called Canva. Now Canva is some online graphic design software with loads of different templates, including one for infographics. So just search for Canva in Google and go to their website. When you get to the sign-in screen, you can just use your Google account to log in, choosing your school account. If it's the first time you've logged into Canva, it will probably ask you what kind of job you do. Um, you can just click on the student option and then it will go through asking what kind of artwork you want to create. And you may not see an option for infographic, in which case click on the link that says something like can't find what you're looking for or show me more styles. And you should come to a screen a bit like this one. And if you scroll down here under blogging and ebooks, there's one that says infographic. And that's the design template that we're going to be using today. So click on that. So once your infographic layout has opened, you'll have some templates on the left hand side that you can use as the basis. So you can choose one with a, a layout or color scheme that seems close to what you want to do. Uh, and it's entirely up to you to choose the one that you think is going to visualize the data in the most appropriate way for whatever it is that you've been researching. When you find an option that you like, simply click on it and it will load up that template. At this stage, we now need to go and customize the template that we've loaded. So most elements in Canva, particularly if they're text, can just be double clicked or clicked on and you'll get some formatting tools that's pretty similar to any other tool you might have used online. So just select the header, for example, and change so that it's more appropriate for what you uh, have looked up. Now it's quite possible that your text doesn't fit so you might just need to change some of the spacing controls or possibly the font size. If there are elements you don't need, you can just click on them and press the trash button. And now let's get into changing some of the graphical elements here. Now some of the illustrations built into Canva have some pretty unique features that makes them really, really good to use. For example, if I click on this little man here, I get some colors appear here and each of the colors in that particular graphic can be individually changed. So if I didn't like his blue trousers, I could click on the blue and change it for uh, maybe some green trousers. And it just changes that particular color within the infographic. If I think that that graphic is just completely inappropriate and useless, I can just get rid of it altogether by trashing it. So let's look at my data that I collected and find out, well, what's the first thing that I want to show on my infographic? 
So let's go back to my summary. And it was, who wants a code club? So this is about the people who are joining. And I've got some year groups, and I've got a fact here that 10 out of 11 of the people have coded before, so they want to carry on building their skills. So let's start off with this data first, because it's probably the easiest one. We're going to use a bar chart to represent these values. Now fortunately, my template already has a chart, but if yours doesn't, you can just go to Elements and Charts, and you can click and drag in a chart style that you think is going to be suitable for your infographic. Once you've got your chart in there, if you click on it, again, you can change some of the colors. And if you choose a base color, it will update the other colors to be uh, complementary. You can also change the data by clicking on the data. And here's where we can change the labels and the values. So I'm going to have some labels for each year group. And now I just need to put in the values. And notice how my chart automatically updates with the labels and relative values. If I needed more space, I could always click on it and drag it to make it a bit bigger, uh, or wider, I should say, or taller as well. Now, of course, this isn't quite age distribution. I'm going to change this title to Who Wants a Code Club? Notice as I resize elements, if I do it slowly enough, I get these occasional uh, purple, horizontal, and vertical lines that appear. And those are my guides that show that I have now aligned this particular element's width so that it is entirely central to my whole infographic. Now, I'd like a visual way to show this 10 out of 11 people have coded before. So to do that, I'm going to use a technique quite common in infographics, which is to have 11 different um, illustrations of a person, and I'm going to color 10 of them in to signify 10 out of 11. So to do this, I'm just going to zoom in slightly on my infographic. And I want an illustration of a person. So I'm going to click on Illustrations, and I'm going to search uh, for person. I choose the Illustrations option, because I don't really want photos. And it brings up several different images of people. Now, some of them are free. And some of them are only available if you're a pro subscriber or if you want to pay to use it. So I'm going to grab this one, drop it in, resize it. Now bear in mind I need to get 11 of these, so I'm going to make them quite small. And once I've got one the right size, I can click copy, so I get another one. And I'm going to keep doing that, and I'm going to keep lining them up so they touch neatly. And actually, to help me out, I can click, drag, and select all six of those, copy the whole lot, drag them underneath so that they all line up. And now I'm going to select all 12 that I have, make them just a little bit smaller so they fit in, line them up. I'm going to get rid of that one because I only need 11. And now I only want to color in 10 of them. So I'm going to select by clicking a box around those nine, hold down my shift key and click on that one as well and I've got 10 of them selected. And now I'm going to choose to group them and I'm going to set the color for them. And let's say these are the ones who have done coding before so let's make them maybe a nice blue. And maybe this one who's on their own, I might make that sort of uh, a gray color. And I should really explain this graphic, so I'm going to need to make some space for some text underneath it to say um, 10 out of 11 have coded before. So perhaps I need to make this a bit smaller still. So I'm going to click and select them, drag them up, and I'm going to give myself some room to add some text. A little bit of body text will do. Drag that in. And again, I'm, I'm obviously going to need to make this smaller. 10 out of 11 have coded before. And it still doesn't quite fit, so I'm just going to have to have a little play around with my layout. And that's some of the fun of making an infographic. Now, one of the next things that I wanted in my results is to say, what do people want to do at the Code Club? And one of the most popular things is making Raspberry Pi projects. Now, it would be really nice to have a Raspberry Pi logo 
in here, but unfortunately Canva doesn't have one. But that's okay because we can upload our own logos. So to do that, I'm just going to go into Google Images and search for Raspberry Pi logo, Google Images, and I'm gonna choose a, pan, a transparent background version. Uh, this one looks good, click on that. View the original image, and I can just right click, save that image onto my desktop, and it will download. Back in Canva, I can now go to Uploads, upload my own image, choose the Raspberry Pi logo that I've downloaded, and it will upload to Canva. Once it's uploaded, I can just drag and drop it straight onto my infographic, and I can resize it as if I, it was any other graphic element. I can't change uh, any of the colors within the graphic, but I can resize it and I can use it. So that's pretty much good enough for me. So there now I've just included the fact that five people want to make a Rarity Pi project. And obviously I can go on and on doing the same things with the other information in the summary that I have of my survey. There are loads of different elements that you can drop into your infographics within Canva. You just need to search for them. There are shapes that you can use for backgrounds. There are these illustrations that we've already looked at. There are icons, which have some very useful ones, including all sorts of things that would be great for device use, like little phones and computers. And there are many different types of charts, which are fantastic for showing numerical data, especially the way that they automatically update and the way the colors uh, match your designs. So it's up to you to decide what you want to do with your infographic and how you are gonna display the data that you have collected. Once you are finished, you simply need to press the download button and you can download your infographic either as a PNG file is probably a good way to do it or otherwise as a PDF file. Download it as either of those formats and then you can upload it as an attachment to Google Classroom as the submission of your work for this assignment. If you're really proud of what you've made, you can also share it and then you can get a link which you can share with your friends and family and they'll be able to go to it and see the work that you have produced. So get cracking, have some fun, really enjoy this one. Make sure though that you are clearly communicating what it is that you're trying to get across and you're not too distracted just by all the different graphics and colors and images that you could use. The key thing of your infographic is it needs to tell a story, it needs to get across the information in a visually engaging way that is very clear and very quick to understand.